Good morning, fishy folks. Happy Water Change Wednesday, also known as Hump Day for people that don't have fish tanks. Just doing a quick pan of the fish room so you can see I did do some work this weekend. Not as much as I wanted to, but that's the story of my life, isn't it? Uh, let's go back to the workbench. It's pretty organized now. I do have some room for uh, boxing fish and, and packing and all that stuff. I do have all my food organized. Uh, you can see some Fish Freaks Plus, an old bag of North Fin. Uh, I did find a bunch of Sarah sample bags. Um, I have an old bottle of, an old bottle, jar, can, what is this? Bottle. New Life Spectrum. I used to love this flake food, um, but that's not what's in there. That's, the bottle is just for storage. Uh, I have some bulk cobalt flake that I got at a, uh, uh, a local fish club auction. I think it's like a $50 tub, and I think I paid 20 bucks for it. Um, but I got it years ago, not years ago, that's a lie, a year ago, and I just started using it recently, and the fish seemed to really like it, so. Uh, we have our bags and heat packs, we have our insulation, our tape gun, a drip in pour, a dip in pour that broke. Um, I pretty much took it out of the box, put it on the workbench, and actually I think I put it on my cart uh, over here, and then I knocked it off like an idiot, so. I'm considering crazy gluing it or just leaving it. I don't know. Got some newspaper. And then we have this box of deep blue professional high performance airline tubing, 500 feet. And uh, my local fish store got this for me. It uh, about half price of what it would be on Amazon, to be honest with you. And I couldn't say no. I really like it. Um, if you remember, I did a video that I bought it. I think when I got the blue Phantom Plecos, I got blue airline tubing. Really, it was a coincidence. Um, and uh, I got the, the big roll, so I'm gonna redo all the water lines. I've started uh, adding some water lines to this rack, which we can go over. Um, if you're not familiar with my auto water change system, I'll try to put a link in the description below, but it's pretty simple. Um, I have a, a timer here. I'll put links to all this stuff in the description below as well, if you're interested. But uh, I have an irrigation timer here. And that irrigation timer controls a irrigation valve. And that, uh, the source of that water comes from uh, my house and it goes through a temperature control valve and then those three filters, which I need to change one. And then we have a bunch of piping and fittings and you know, you might be saying to yourself, why? why? Well, that the thing that looks like a donut, that's a union. And then there's a union here, which means I can take that section out if I need to service it. Uh, or if I need to service uh, the valve. And then I just have a spigot over there that I use to fill tanks manually if I need to. And while you're looking at the ceiling and see some storage I have. Anyway, it goes through those three filters. It goes through here and then it goes through more pipes and more pipes. And then it goes to one of these, oops, sorry, one of these manifolds. And then drips in. The way I control the amount of water is the timer. Um, you can also get these that are metered, like 20 gallons an hour, or you can get ends, uh, like, um, ends for the, the airline tubing, uh, that also meters water. So, you know, that could be a one gallon per hour or two gallon per hour, whatever it might be, five gallon per hour, <clears throat> irrigation, uh, I forget what it's called. I want to say... I don't know what I want to say. Anywho, that's how it works. That's how my auto water change system works. And I really like it and it's really proven good for me. I've gone through a couple different water change systems. I started with a sump system where all these tanks were connected and there was a 55 gallon back there and all the water drained into there and then was pumped into, you know, back into the tanks through a manifold system. There's some of the old piping that's up there. Um, and the reason why I left it up there is I've attached things to it. But I think when I redo the water lines, I'm going to take it all down. Um, but I did away with that when I got uh, Red Worm and pretty much every tank was infected. And then I had to eradicate the Red Worm, which I did with Levamisol and Fenbendazole. Then I had, <coughs> excuse me, 
Then I had a, uh, a big water storage tub, which was over here and it held about 200 gallons and I filled it up every day and then I let the water age for a day and then I, uh, uh, and that gassed off the chlorine and then I went ahead and filled the tanks from that with a pump. Then I did away with that and came up with this system. Um, I watched a couple different YouTubers to figure out this system. Uh, Cord from Aquarium Co-op and a couple others. Um, and I used some ingenuity on my own, we'll say. That's the heater control valve. It's a shower valve, is, if you're looking to do it. It's a shower valve. Um, and the brown knob that's sort of facing down is what controls the temperature. Um, but yeah. So you got hot and cold going in, that controls the temperature, and that water goes into uh, my filters, which I need to change one, I think. Um, any other updates in the fish room? Yeah, let's talk about the water lines. So I added uh, this five gallon tank and that has Bruce in it. Say hi, Bruce. How you doing, buddy? It's kind of loving life in his big tank. It's not as big as his other one, but it's cleaner and it gets fresh water every day. So he's probably happy. Uh, then I have this 10 gallon and I'm sort of doing a test to see how long it takes to fill up. Um, this is two days worth of water. So I'm guessing it's going to take uh, six days or so to fill up, but we'll see. And um, I added water lines for the two big tanks. Not really sure what I'm putting in there still. I think I'm going to get uh, a big fish from a, uh, a friend of mine. Um, not going to tell you what it is yet. And that's going to go in one of these. And I think I'm going to get an Oscar for the other one. I don't know. I may, I may do salt. I don't know. I don't know what I'm going to do. We'll have to see. Um, but I do have two fill lines in each of these tanks. You can see they're actually moving from the air from the dehumidifier. But, um, and that's what I did over here. I'm probably going to use that 10 gallon tank for uh, the glass belly guppies. Then I'll start drilling tanks here. I'll be able to, you know, drill one, move the red dragons into this one, then drill this one. This one's drilled in the back. I have to take all the paint off because um, it's drilled back there, obviously. Um, so that's really no big deal. That's one of my old tanks. I have tanks everywhere, empty tanks everywhere. I got to organize them and see what I need um, to finish this rack. At least two more 20s, which I have in stock. But I know I have 20s elsewhere, out in the garage, outside. Uh, my buddy still has two 20s that I bought from him that I just haven't picked up yet. Um, and then I have to decide what I'm going to do with this tank. Do I want to put... I could fit three more 10s up there if I take that 20 long down. But I like the 20 long for sore tails. Um, those aren't sore tails, those are platies, but... You know, I do have a couple colonies of swordtails. Speaking of swordtails, I have blue-black swordtails that I'm considering selling. If you're interested in swordtails, these blue-black swordtails here, um, I will tell you they don't breed true. Every about half the batch is clear or yellow. I'll show you what the, they look like. Um, these guys. So I'm sure if you're a sore tail expert, you could tell based on what these look like, what the blue black ones are made out of, but I don't really know. And they're not doing it for me. I thought I'd love them. And I really, I don't, I like these better. And these are just, you know, red wag sore tails or red sore tails if they don't have the black tail. But yeah, these are exciting me. I'm looking forward to breeding these high fins. Pretty cool. Um, yeah, that's about it. If you haven't checked out michaelsfishroom.com, my website, check it out. Uh, Daniel Anderson, the mad scientist, has redone it. Um, it really looks good. It's a little busy, but it really looks good. And that's that. Um, auction season is upon us. Delaware County Aquarium Society in Pennsylvania. Uh, their auction, I think, is the 3rd of March. Not sure if I'm going to that or not. Um, because the following week is my local fish club auction, Jersey Shore Aquarium Society. And that I'm definitely going to. And then the week after that is the NEC in Connecticut, which of course I'm going to. I'm leaving. I'm staying up there Thursday. 
Friday the show starts. Saturday the show. Sunday the show. I'm coming home Sunday night, which is Sunday night's gonna be a long night because uh, it's about a four-hour drive, and the show probably ends at five. Um, and then there's weekend traffic and you know cleaning up and blah blah blah. So it'll be a long night, but it'll be worth it. <coughs> if you're going to NEC, let me know. Drop a comment. Shoot me an email. Um, be looking forward to meeting some fans. I have some new stickers to give out new design uh, also if you're looking to buy any fish from me and you're going to that show certainly uh, email me and we'll work it out uh, I just asked if you want to buy fish pay ahead of time so I'm not you know bringing a bunch of fish up there hoping that I actually meet the person that wants them but uh, this pair of real red albino guppies is for sale if you're interested and the blue black sore tails are definitely the whole colony is for sale I think there's two or three females and a male. I'd have to check uh, for you. If you're interested, let me know and I'll check. Um, obviously, everything else is for sale, but, you know, I don't have those listed on the website. Molly's, I've had somebody now contact me three or four times that he wants to buy all my Molly's. And we've never met, so I don't know if he's still serious or not. I do have these beautiful koi angels that I could probably bring up if you're interested. I just don't, they're just really big to ship and expensive. Of course, if you want them and you're willing to pay, I will certainly ship them. Uh, we have three blue zebras from that last batch that I had also up for sale, but now I'm just talking about what's for sale and that's really not what this video is about. So. All right, guys. Hope everyone has a great day. Let me know if you have any uh, questions. And uh, I'll talk to you guys soon. Happy Water Change Wednesday.